Hello everybody, hope you're doing well today. Mark G with a C back with another video. Gonna show you some music, but this is more um, on a personal level. Um, this video is gonna be all about enchantment, really. Um, blatant plug, or whatever you want to see it as. Um, our album, our one and only album, Dance the Marvel Naked, um, has recently had a, another reissue on Transcending Records um, just only a couple of weeks ago. So um, the record company Transcending Records were, were kind enough to send us uh, a few copies for our personal uh, pleasure. So I thought I wanted to show these to you um, and while I was at it I thought I'll just show you all of the issues, all of the, the additions of it, all of the reissues it's had over the years. Um, we originally did our first demo uh, in 1993, um, recorded in a little studio in Preston, not far away from um, our hometown of Blackpool. Um, this is called A Tear for Young Eloquence. The reason I'm showing you this will become apparent a bit later on in the video. Uh, you see the track list in there. We only ever pressed 50 copies of this. Um, they sold out pretty quickly. But this was our very beginnings. It's a very raw and basic and um, I suppose, if I'm honest, not even very well made demo. The studio we used, assembly line in Preston, the fellow who ran it was a lovely enough bloke, but I don't think he'd ever dealt with metal. Uh, it may be rock, but he'd certainly never dealt with a death metal band. So it is very primitive, but it gives you a taste of what Enchantment was all about. Um, we were lucky enough to meet Nicholas Barker back in the day in a band he played in a band before Cradle of Filth and numerous other bands he's gone on to be in um, called Monolith. And like I say, we were lucky enough to, to play with him a few times. So he produced this demo for us. I suppose he was not so much produced, it, it was produced by him because he was he was kind of helping us through the process we'd never been in the studio before we were all in our late teens early 20s at this time um, so he kind of helped us through the process give us a bit of confidence to do what we were doing um, so that was our first recording there like i say the demo a tear for young eloquence so shortly after recording that we were contacted by century media records um, and they wanted to sign us and this was the um, the fruits of that collaboration our debut album released in 94 on Century Media it was actually um, kind of released I don't know if you can see it there but it was a division it was called Carnivore Records which was a division of Century Media Records um, at the time we signed um, a six album contract with Central Media and this is going back like I say to 94 so My Dying Bride, um, Paradise Lost, Anathema, um, they were making waves in that in the sort of UK death doom scene uh, and I think personally Central Media um, wanted a part of that they, they had Tiamat on their books they were a big band on their label at the time along with numerous other great bands Ace Fix and more goth, um, just to name a few. Uh, but yeah, this was 94 released. Um, it got a little bit of um, promotion, not as much as we would have liked. You know, when you sign a six album deal, you're kind of thinking, um, the world's your oyster. But we were young and we just wanted to write music and, and play the music that we loved. So that was our debut album, Dance the Marble Naked, in 94. It was released on uh, Just CD and Cassette. You can hear a little bit of My Ocean's Vast playing in the background. Um, spinning the vinyl, which we'll get to. So, um, after 94, we recorded that album. We were in the process of writing material for our next uh, album we had got probably seven or eight songs if i remember rightly um 
not so much in pre-production but we were demoing then we were getting ready um, to hopefully go into the studio um, I mean the songs on, on this album had been written um, all throughout 93 uh, and early 94 for the album so they were there you know and, and, and obviously after this was released then we started uh, getting back into the songwriting side of things again um, and again like I say with us being young naive stupid whatever you want to call us um, we we just um, I think I think there was a lot of a lot of different things, a little, a few little personal um, things going on, um, and we called it a day. We knocked it on the head. Looking back, um, I wish we would have stuck at it. Um, we didn't do ourselves any favours. We were managing ourselves. Um, we'd we'd at one point tried or thought about. Um, management um, I even think Karsten the guitarist who sadly passed away now from Morgoth he was going to um, manage us at one point um, but anyway you know trying to write music being a band manage yourself all that side of it it was a lot it, it got a lot for us we were young we just wanted to play music play gigs it, it got a bit too much for us um, and we called it a day before we'd even recorded our second album and it got anywhere near to pre-production for it or anything um, the nice thing is um, we've kind of remained friends um, throughout the whole period uh, and again I'll get to a little bit more about um, the sort of personnel of the band a bit later on in the video but um, yeah so that was that we kind of went our own ways and just got on with life you know whatever it is, work, family, whatever. So then in 2009, um, I personally spotted this on Amazon. And I thought, wow, that's not this release. As you can see, there's a little bit of a different artwork going on. And this was um, Peaceville, decided to reissue our album. We didn't have any um, contact with Peaceville whatsoever. This was a complete um, shock to us when it came out it's nice though you know 15 years yeah 15 years after um, it originally came out that Peaceville wanted to reissue it now we'd had some dealings with Hammy from Peaceville um, in the lead up to recording uh, the album originally uh, because we used um, Academy Studios in um, West Yorkshire where obviously My Dying Bride and Anathema uh, and numerous other bands had recorded and obviously it was the sort of go-to studio for Peaceville recording artists so Hammy took us there, introduced us um, and it, it, he was going to be involved and I know he's actually down as um, producer or assistant producer or whatever it is on, um, on the album um, that never happened for whatever reason I don't want to get into the, the personal side of things um it's not really my place to say it on one of my videos because i don't know the complete truth of what happened but anyway he did have some involvement with us um in the studio but he certainly didn't produce it it was produced by mags um who was keith appleton's assistant at academy studios and by ourselves really anyway so peaceful Obviously knew us, knew about the band, knew the music. So when we saw this, I suppose it kind of made sense really if any any album, any um, label was gonna reissue it, it would be Peaceville. So it's quite nice to see. And you can see by um, the year 2009, one of the, in one of these crazy super jewel case boxes. I like the hype sticker on the front there. Always kind of filled me with uh, pride when it said uh, a hidden gem of UK doom death metal. You can read that there. So yeah, that was nice. It was a nice thing that it came out, you know, when it was being introduced to a new sort of set of metal heads, uh, maybe the next generation, because it's 15 years later. Um, so then after that, and we're going back to last year now, so another 10 years after that Peaceful reissue, 
Um, we were contacted this time by um, a gentleman from Cosmic Key Creations uh, label over in um, Holland, I think it is if I'm saying it right. And he said we're going to put out um, a vinyl reissue. We've been in touch with Central Media, we've got the rights to release it. Um, we've got it all sorted, we just wanted to let you know um, what was happening. Uh, and we'd be more than happy to um, send you guys a copy of your own music. And we were like, great. So this is what um, came of that, the 2019 release. Now, as you can see again, slightly different artwork. Um, I think this artwork originally, I don't think um, they could get a decent image. They only wanted to do a, a, a nice job on the artwork. So it's the same um, stone formation. Um, from the same part of the world, just a different picture from a different angle. But I like it, it's a nice, um, a nice touch that. I have shown this in one of my other videos. Um, nice little insert there. So, as you can imagine, we were, we were really, really made up and proud um, that a record label was gonna put our album out and we all sort of got in touch with each other again. You know, like I say, we'd stayed uh, on friendly terms um, and we got in touch and we talked about this um, and it kind of got us discussing what about those songs that we'd written for the second album? You know, um, what do you think? Shall we... You know, there's obviously interest in our album, in our band, in our music. Are we gonna, are we gonna do something? You know, I know it's 20 odd years later, but there's a lot of bands who were around in the early 90s who were, who were at it, who've come back and made some great albums. What do you think? So we talked about it. We talked about writing new music, whether that was gonna be a possibility with us all having families and, and now we all live all in different areas of the country. So we thought, yeah, let's um, let's do it. It really, really sort of inspired us. Um, and we put a few feelers out there, spoke to a few different people, and everyone was like, absolutely, this album, as far as a lot of people are concerned, is, is an absolute classic of the genre, which is very humbling, to be honest, to, to hear people saying. Um, so from the minute this album came out last year, Enchantment had kind of reformed and we were talking about you know working on those songs that we wrote originally now we only had two um two songs that we could find from a rehearsal tape the others we've kind of had to go from memory um but yeah we are working on it enchantment is has risen from the ashes um and we are writing um, or reworking the old material um, and playing with a few different ideas so um, at some point over the next I don't know how long but there will be an Enchantment second album released I'm not going to go into too much detail about album titles and song titles which we do have um, that's for another video for another time so that's 2019 reissue on Cosmic Key Creations. Um, thanks to Vauta for um, putting that out and showing um, your faith and interest in our music. Um, so then late, I think it might have been late last year or maybe even early this year, I was contacted by a gentleman by the name of Mike from Transcending Records over in North America. And he said he had spoke to Cosmic Key they were just doing the vinyl reissue. Um, he wanted to put out a CD reissue of it. Again, he was a fan of the music, um, loved what we'd done all those years ago. And this is it. This is what shows from that um, collaboration. Um, like I say, a 2020 release, Transcending Records. Now, initially, it was only going to be released in uh, North America but I do believe they have got some stock over in Europe, so you can order this 
from Transcending Records EU store. Now, what was interesting about this release is Mike contact me, contacted me very early on in the, um, the process of, of doing this, um, and we talked about the demo from 93, um, and he said he'd be quite interested in um, adding the demo onto this album as bonus tracks. So we were like, yeah, great. You know, it's it's raw, it's basic, but it shows what Enchantment was all about, you know, in the beginning. So if you can see that, I hope it focuses in. Um, you can see the last song, Meadows, which was on the original album. You can see the extra tracks on there. They've done a really nice job. I'll show you a little bit about inside, if I can get these bits out. I always hate it when I can't get these out. Right, I can't get it out. But, um, nice inside there, and the CD. With the album cover on, let me see if I can get this out without wrecking it. Please come out, I haven't got any nails, so it's hard to get out. I'll put a piece of paper in there, that's it, there we go. Um, lyrics on the inside. Enchantment logo in the background, and <clears throat> Mike also asked me to, um, well, said if you wanted to write a little piece um, about this reissue, please do. And in all fairness, I know it's credited to me there, but um, Paul, our vocalist, um, had a lot to do with this as well. We kind of wrote it together, but I'm claiming all the credit. Um, so, yeah, that was it. 2020 reissue of Dance the Marble Naked on Transcending Records, available in Europe and America. And while we were talking about the demo tracks, he said, what about doing a little short press of the, um, the demo as well? I think it's only 100 copies of this available. So we were like, yeah, why not? Absolutely. It's, um, again, getting music out to that next generation. Um, I'm sure people who like Dance Marble Naked are always quite interested to hear where it all began. And like I say, the original demo was only 50 copies ever made. Um, so there's another 100 now. Um, they've kind of kept it fairly... I mean, you can see the tape there has got the enchantment written on it. Our tape was just, the original one was just a, a blank. Um, that's the original. And that's the reissue so you can see they've kept it quite um, true to the original except for the added bonus on the inside and obviously our original demo it's just paper just we made all these inserts ourselves and um, cutting them up with scissors um, this cassette comes with this is exactly the same as the original demo except for the little added picture at the end. We didn't put that on our uh, original demo. And in all honesty, this picture was taken uh, by Century Media Records um, for part of, well, part of the sort of photo session, I suppose, for uh, Dance of Marble Naked. But it's never been put out there, that picture, so that's kind of an original. Mark G with a C, with a that's how long ago that was so yeah that's it that is um, I suppose a little bit of a history of enchantment but um, it was more to do in what, with me wanting to show you these this new, brand new 2020 reissue of the album um, yeah very proud um, when you go back and you're thinking you know it's what 26 years ago since it was released and people are still interested in hearing the music it's uh, like I said before it's it's very humbling um, the vinyl spinning in the background that's what you were listening to um, so yeah I hope this video has been of some interest to, to people um, like I say uh, really really proud to have had um, a reissue 
well, it's the fourth reissue now. So, um, yeah. If you've not heard us, check us out. If you're into the heavier side of death metal, doom metal, like I say, we were always likened to Paradise Lost, uh, My Dying Bride, Anathema. Uh, there was another band in the UK called Decomposed, um, who, like us, kind of slipped under the radar like the other guys did but so yeah thank you for watching as always um i will speak to you again very soon uh, and until then take care bye for now